jelking, penile traction device, penis pumps, dermal fillers, and lastly, surgery. Hi, I'm Stephanie Wolf, the leading sexual wellness expert here at the Nova Center in Studio City, California. Men have been obsessed with the size of their penis since ancient Egyptian days. In fact, the Egyptian god of power, fertility, and manliness was depicted with a large erect penis. They found drawings that date back 8,000 years in present day Turkey that has a man with a penis as long as his leg. It's no wonder that you guys are obsessed with your penile size. But did you know that the average size of an erect penis is only five to five and a half inches and three and a half inches when flaccid? A micropenis is less than three inches when erect. And these micropenises are usually due to a genetic variation or a hormonal deficiency. So if you think about past time lives, when these men were trying to increase their penile length, their penile size, to show their power, they were using snake venom. And this snake venom would cause swelling and inflammation, which would portray an enlarged penis. Or some men would even attach weights to their penis to help with the stretching and lengthening of the penis. But lucky for you guys, you live in today's world. And today's world gives you other options. So let's talk about the first one, jelking. Jelking is a manual and less painful option of stretching your penis. To correctly jelk, it's just a maneuver of stretching and squeezing, which actually sounds like masturbation to me. But <laughs> jelking is where you are semi-erect, not fully erect and not flaccid. You will be applying a lubrication gel and these guys typically will use their thumb and their forefinger to create this pressure at the base of the penis and they're, they're going to apply this motion of squeezing and pressure downwards for approximately 20 minutes. Again, the idea behind jelking or this squeezing and pressure downward position is all about creating blood flow and micro tears. We've talked about this before. Micro tears is going to call on the brain to send down stem cells and stem cells always bring growth factors. And these growth factors are going to repair this micro tear by implementing brand new tissue. And remember, brand new tissue brings new blood vessels and new nerve endings, thereby enhancing the penile size. Now, some doctors don't agree with jelking because some guys can get a little aggressive or excessive, and this can cause scar tissue or plaque formation, which is otherwise known as Peyronie's disease. So jelking can, in fact, contribute to you getting Peyronie's disease. So you have to be very careful when you do gel. Now, can you have side effects from jelking other than <laughs> giving yourself Peyronie's disease? Sure. Same idea, if you're stretching too much, too hard, too excessive, you can cause little bruising, you're breaking these smaller blood vessels, you can have some swelling, you may even experience a little bit of numbness sensation. But remember, this is all reversible and just requires that you lay off the jelking for a couple days or maybe just reduce the amount of pressure or tension that you're giving to the penis. Now, one thing I must say is that I can always tell when a patient jelks. There's something about the tissue that just looks a little off. I like to call it snuffleupagus. If you remember snuffleupagus, <laughs> that's exactly what this penis looks like. So if you're okay with having that appearance, then jelking might be the tool for you. The second option is gonna be the penile traction device. Now I did a whole other video discussing the penile traction device and how it actually works. But just to give you a little information here, the penile traction device was actually invented to treat Peyronie's disease. And it was invented during the mid 20th century. So it's been around for quite some time. It can look a little barbaric because you are placing your penis into this mechanical device Device where you have to actually attach a band around the penis and hold it in a locked position. You must wear this traction device anywhere from four to six hours every single day for up to six months in order to see an inch to two inches of length.
doing. So it is a time commitment on your part, but again, same idea. It's causing this stretching and pulling technique, which is then going to increase blood flow and increase micro tears. Again, calling stem cells to come down and repair the tissue. Brand new tissue brings new blood flow and new nerve endings. Number three is going to be the penis pump. I did another video discussing the penis pump in great detail, but the penis pump dates back to the 1800s. They were using a glass cylinder as their very first vacuum device or penis pump. And this vacuum device was meant to create internal pressure to bring blood flow into the penis and cause stretching. Again, we keep talking about this stretching technique because the stretching technique is going to call on the brain to send down these stem cells to heal that tissue. Now, it wasn't until the 1980s that the FDA actually recognized a penis pump for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. So these poor guys, they went hundreds of years before actually getting to really realize the potential of a penis pump. Number three is dermal fillers. Dermal fillers are exactly what you think. You see these ladies walking around with you know, lip fillers, cheek fillers, there's even chin fillers. A lot of times what happens is when you're injecting these fillers, you're creating a stretching technique of the skin so that you can have this filler you know, be placed correctly underneath the surface of the skin. But what happens is as that dermal filler begins to wear away or dissolve, you have this stretched skin that no longer goes back to its original state. So I do have a lot of men who don't like that aspect of it and are always questioning, hey, can my skin return to normal size? And unfortunately, it doesn't. The other thing that I get a lot of questions about is, well, where is this dermal filler being placed? And it's only being placed in the corpus cavernosum, which is the shaft of the penis, meaning there is no dermal filler that gets placed in the head of the penis. So if you remember watching Beetlejuice, which maybe I'm dating myself, but there was a scene where he was in a waiting room and there was a large man with a small head sitting next to him. That's exactly what the penis looks like with dermal filler, in my opinion. There's nothing you can do about that. Now, something you may have been researching is something called phalophil, and phalophil is dermal filler. It is using hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring type of collagen that our body creates, and it is temporary, meaning it's not permanent, which to be honest with you, I don't think you want a permanent filler in your penis because you can have nodules or lumping, inflammation, bruising. If you don't like the phalophil or you don't like the hyaluronic acid filler in your penis, it is dissolvable. So you definitely can have it removed. So that's a plus. And then of course, the very last one is surgery. And to be honest with you, I think surgery should always be your last option because anytime you're having surgery, you're cutting the skin. And when you cut the skin, you are creating trauma. You're creating broken blood vessels, broken nerve endings. And so you can have some paresthesia or numbness that sometimes doesn't ever resolve. And so that can be an issue for these guys. Now there's three different types of penis pumps. One is a semi-rigid, which is exactly what you think it is. It appears to be full all the time. So I do have a lot of my older gentlemen who prefer to have something like that, but most men don't. And then of course, the second one is a pump. So that means that when you're ready to have intercourse and you need an erection, you're going to pump it up. And then the last one and the most recent one is the Panuma. And the Panuma is using a medical grade silicone sheath that surrounds the penis to extend extend it both girth and length. It's the first ever FDA approved penile implant for enhancement, but I will tell you, I have had several patients who come to see me because they're having issues with their penuma and then they have to go back in and have it removed, whether that's because they had surgery or you know it wasn't placed properly or it moved during the time period. So again, they're having to undergo a second form of surgery. So surgery should always be your last option. So again, just to recap, we're talking about five different ways to increase your penile length, and that's through jelking, penile traction devices, penis pumps, dermal fillers, and lastly, definitely lastly, is surgery. So if you have any other questions, wanna learn more, come visit us at the Nova Center.